Welcome to Monthly Money, where we take a look at someone's past month spending and the income that came in, see how that all comes together to meet their financial goals they're trying to achieve or get over the financial hurdles that are standing in their way. My name is Caleb Hammer, and today we are meeting with Dakota. Dakota, how old are you and where are you based out of? I am 20 and I am based out of uh, Hillsborough, Oregon. Um, it's about 10, 15 miles outside of Portland to the west. Oh, very cool. What do you do for a living? Um, I am a distribution specialist, as I'm titled. Hmm. Yeah. What do you make a year? Um, so I make nineteen fifty an hour. Um, my yearly income is a little different because I do a bunch of side hustles as well. Um, but based off the math, nineteen fifty times fifty two, uh, or sorry. Uh, do you work forty hours a week? Yeah, forty hours a week, and then uh, I do have the option to do overtime. So for the last three weeks, I've been doing ten hour days. Um, just for more extra money. <laughs> hmm. Okay. And what are these side hustles? Um, so well, current, well, from the past, I used to do, um, DoorDash and Uber Eats. Um, I'd make between 600 and 800 a week, um, or no, a month. Uh, I do it whenever I was really grinding. I was doing that weekly about, I was doing about 20 hours a week. Um, I dimmed it down to like, um, 12 hours a week and I was able to make six to 800. Um, I stopped doing that just because I wanted to uh, stop just driving as much. My car um, is a little rough. Uh, it's a 1999 Honda Civic, so it's pretty old, but I'm kind of driving it into the ground. <laughs> um, and I started doing a, a app called TaskRabbit. Have you ever heard of that? No. Um, basically people, um, they need stuff built. So like tables, desks, chairs, um, people can have me hang stuff. I can mount TVs, a bunch of random tasks that you might need. Oh. Um, and I made, I've done about like 12 to 13 tasks and I've made about $1,100, $1,200 with that. Um, I do that off and on. So on a consistent basis right now, you'd say you make on average 700 bucks on Uber Eats and DoorDash or whatever it was you said. Yes. Um, I've stopped doing that though for the last two months because I'm um, trying to do couch flipping. Um, so I've kind of taken all my time and energy and doing couch flipping on the side um, and that's going pretty well. Okay, cool. Uh, and shout out to the cat in the background. What's the cat's name? Uh, that is Bo. Um, Bo Bracken is my last name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bo's very cute. Yeah, he's a cutie. <laughs> he, he's, he's, in, he's lazy. <laughs> yeah, he's already fallen asleep listening to the financial conversations. So. There you go. <laughs> um, what are some of the financial like obstacles that you're trying to get over that I might be able to help with? Or what are some of the financial goals that you're trying to get to that I might be able to help with? Yeah, so um, I did get married in April. Um, and me and my wife, thank you. <laughs> um, pretty exciting. Um, we kind of... So we've been having our finances separate. We've been living together for two years. Um, and I, in your past two videos I've watched, um, you've like questioned why people don't combine their finances sooner. Um, main reason why we were doing it is because um, I have credit cards and she has credit cards. And we just wanted to see like, we didn't want to put each other in like a hole, I guess you could say, um, which we haven't done together. Um, and yeah, just trying to figure out the best way to combine our finances. Um, I guess that's another obstacle. And then as of lately, um, I've been struggling to like keep my budget, not necessarily like overspending, but like tracking everything. Like I've kind of, I, I used to track stuff very well. Like, you know, um, I use every dollar. I know your favorite person, um, his app. It's very convenient. Okay. His app. Um, I know there's better apps out there. Um, that and then for some reason, um, I really enjoy investing, but I don't have the biggest emergency fund, and I know I should. And I'm having a hard time like breaking that barrier of like just having an emergency fund and not touching it. I'm actually really surprised for the first one with the marriage one, since you have every dollar from uh, our biggest fan, Dave. I'm surprised. Um, because he's like so like, you know, bronze agian about marriage and how they should do stuff. I talk about it more in a way where just essentially um the you know, the it's a pretty clear, well researched statistic, um, where 
and understanding the psychology of a marriage where finances are like essentially the major cause of divorce in the country. So having a combined income, being able to be on the same page and everything kind of helps with that. So that's where I get from. He goes like full, like, you know, uh, biblical marriage, even though marriage existed well before religion, either way, doesn't matter. That's I'm a little surprised that you, uh, haven't done that. If you're already using his app, that's really interesting. Yeah. So she has her own every dollar app and I have my own and I've, she used to not budget at all. Um, I'm 21, she's 20. So like, we're still pretty young. Um, I am a little more financially aware than her. I've been teaching her things um, just because her background, she never had to deal with money and same for me. I just took it on myself to learn. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. It is a little odd. And we just had a sit down conversation of like, what it's going to look like if we did combine because I was mostly worried about not being able to save and invest because she is doing school full time and she's working part time. And so I'm like, I can save this much money, but also like, you know, I always have to ask her like, do you have like enough for rent? Cause like we did have COVID um, two or three weeks ago and like she wasn't working. I had PTO. She didn't. <laughs> so it was like, are we going like, can you pay rent this month? And if we combine it, I can deal with all that. So yeah, I really, I really don't like the way that you just talked about those different situations because that's like very divided. Like it's super independent. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting because the investing that you're doing is for you know you to be able to retirement retire at some point. But that's not just for you to retire. That's for you to be able to retire together. Yes, and I've realized that coming the last month. I'm like screw this like we're like in this together and like we don't we have no i don't know if it's like hardships but like we don't argue in our relationship like we're very like like we we like get each other and like there's no arguments even about money like if i will always have her covered and hopefully one day she'll have me covered because she'll be making way more money than me in the near soon near future (laughs) um so honeymoon phase definitely working on that yeah uh so okay let's take a look at your money we have a Bank of America, uh, 140 starting balance, 1,200 or 1,022 in, 1,115 out, so more out than in with $47 closing balance. Pretty small, lots of Zells coming in. Do you is this from you all back and forth, or are these no? They're actually there's a few different people on here, so um, and then Zells out. This is all Zelling. <laughs> Yes. Um, so basically, I have my um, main job go into one checking account and then any side hustles I do, whether it be TaskRabbit, DoorDash, Uber Eats, go into this account just so I can keep kind of a better track of it. And um, all of so when people sell me, like all of the money gets sent to this account. So then I have to send it back to myself. Uh... And so it's like, yeah, this account is mostly just all the income is from side hustles and then yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So the chase debit card, is this the primary checking, I guess, chase? Yeah. Chase is the primary checking. I don't do a lot of spending on checking because I have, I use credit cards. Um, It's another, it's another place where you separate from our biggest fan. Yes. (laughs) I love credit cards too. Yeah. Yeah. He's interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, 22, uh, 91 starting balance, 5,119 in, and then pretty much all of it out at $78, 17 cents left. And then all the, yep, some Zells in, some ATM withdrawals and transferring things and paying off cards and yeah, 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 yeah. Classic, 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 nothing crazy. Uh, there was one square payment. Okay. That is not through my business. It's um tattoo I got. And that's what my artist uses. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at the credit cards then to take a look at the spending. Chase Freedom, well, we're already with Chase. We have new purchases of $328. I'm gonna I'm gonna start tracking how much is being purchased because um yeah. Okay, so $328, you pay it off. Do you ever hold balances? Um, No, so I don't pay any interest on them. But um, I think, what, there was like 
45 bucks as a balance. Um, for some reason, I have a really bad habit of like, I'll pay, um, I'll pay off the card weekly on every Friday. Um, I'll pay a portion of it. And then towards the end of the month, if I see there's more, I'll, I'll pay it off. But like my, I have my, uh, my statement date as like the 27th of every month. So like if I make any purchases from the 20, seventh and beyond like it adds to it so there's always a little bit left over but i never pay any interest i guess you can say okay yeah yeah you're taking care of your balance so okay uh this looks like a mixture of fun and responsibility cars we do have cable uh that's actually really rare uh to see that's actually my internet uh i don't know why it pops up as cable yeah, Comcast Cable Company, I guess, or Communications or whatever it is, is I guess their full name. And then Chick-fil-A and Starbucks, Raising Cane's, PetSmart, which PetSmart uh, can be considered a necessity depending on what's purchased, YouTube Premium, and then there's also grocery stores like Trader Joe's, and there was insurance from Geico as well. Uh, and Fred Meyer, which uh, grocery store, correct? Yeah, Fred Meyer's a grocery store. Okay. So let's chase Freedom. And again, you spend $328 there. We have a Costco credit card as well. Costco, whoa, 4000 what, $704? Yes. So this is kind of a um, accumulation of like me and my wife's different, uh, not incomes, but uh, how we're separate in our finances. So um, for instance, like, we'll put all the groceries on my Costco credit card because I get good points back shopping at Costco and then she'll sell me the difference. So same thing with like uh takeout, basically everything split 50, 50. Um, Man, even 50, 50, 2,350 bucks. It's, it's kind of a lot still. It, so some of that stuff isn't, uh, isn't her like isn't us so like groceries whatnot um and yeah <laughs> some stuff is for me um this okay so i know you hate when people say this but uh this month was quite interesting um but you'll see pretty big airline purchases um on this statement this was all reimbursed my aunt and uncle are paying for us to go down to louisiana i'm originally from there um for our like wedding like celebration um okay tattoos for 450 dollars yes <laughs> ets automotive and truck 632 yes that was my wife's car needed to be repaired because i broke something on it oh. and lots of gas uh grocery stores and there was uh travel related stuff as well um yeah very expensive yeah american airlines there it is american airlines and united united so and then grocery stores pet stores and gas and stuff so yeah a lot of that travel stuff really piled up and then the tattoo is pretty ex or tattoos or whatever it was pretty expensive and the um the car repair was pretty expensive as well discover it card only 22 dollars of purchases here so practically nothing in terms of what money is worth right now. Yes. This was my first ever credit card. So I got that whenever I was like freshly 18. <laughs> um, and I don't, I only put Spotify on it. I believe. And Chipotle. And so, listen, they, they, I get good. I get 5% back on rotating categories. All right. So, um, yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do actually then, cause I do want to get a better hold of your spending. I'm going to re, um, I'm just taking off the plane tickets. You also actually missed a uh, a pretty large expense on the Costco card. It's a uh, seven hundred and seventy dollars, I believe, for Midlight in the Attic. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that was for uh, therapy for my wife. Um, she goes to therapy on a uh, regular basis. Well, she's supposed to go twice a month, but. We had an issue with health insurance to where I couldn't afford for her to go twice a month, but that's being switched over beginning January. She's been going once a month. She just, she didn't forget to pay it, but it didn't get billed to us until like whatever date this was. So it had two payments instead of one. So it's that 770 should be divided by two. Um, oh, okay. 
Um, big proponent of uh, therapy, so that's great, and I'm glad that things are changing up to make it a little more affordable on uh, your all parts, so that's good. Um, so I'm seeing all spending probably on your end, and this is going to be kind of a guess because it is a little bit of a mess, but it's um, probably right around $2,000, right under $2,000 uh, for your portion of spending across the three different cards. So... We have a couple different accounts. We have a Vanguard. Let's see here. This is a Roth IRA, $9,267. And it is in Vanguard S&P 500, making me happy. That's uh, yes. And uh, yeah, S&P 500. Uh, and one stock of Coca-Cola. <laughs> uh, I think it's 10. It should be 10. Sorry, I meant you're only in one specific stock. It's Coke. Yeah, but yes. Okay, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Okay, why? <laughs> um. Well, I'm, so I was in between, like, do I want to get dividends or do I just want to get super broad? And I kind of want to get a little more specific in my IRA, which I know you're not really supposed to do. I know it's supposed to be mostly index funds, I guess, PF 100 base. And I think mine mostly is. Um. And then I also have a few shares of Noble. Um, that's like, it's like the, the top 10 or 15 paying S and P 500 dividend stocks in the SP 500. Um, just cause I know dividend growth in a Roth IRA is extremely beneficial. Um, just cause you know, tax advantage and whatnot. Yeah. And one, one thing, well, yeah, definitely. And one thing I'm good with uh, a lot of research that I've been looking into indicates this, and I, I, I should do a video on it because I keep bringing it up a few times now, but when it comes to your overall stock portfolio and art portfolio and crypto portfolio all together, so non-real estate, essentially, um, you know, I index funds, classic S and P 500 base, something 75% of that portfolio is good. And then if you want to get a little freaky in that other 25%, uh, get some, you know, if you want to focus on dividend, if for some reason you want to go crazy with crypto, 25% in crypto would be a lot. But it essentially, the it's 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 the research has shown like no more than 25% in that other riskier things and then have 75% be in that more index basing. So if, if uh, you know, stuff like that is what you wanted to get into on the dividend side, you know, maybe like just 25% of the portfolio and that'd be fine. And the way it's balanced, here you only have 500 in coke and the rest is just so okay i did also forget to send um i do have a uh crypto account coinbase um but there's only like a hundred bucks in it and it's just it, there's ethereum and then um just regular bitcoin basically my work gave us like a random like bonus check and i'm like all right i guess I'll, i just want to experiment with crypto and then yeah i just threw it all in there because it was a, it was a hundred bucks so yeah. Um, and that's sitting at like 92 right now, I think. So. Now, your emergency fund is quite lacking. Yes, it is. Of a thousand bucks, essentially. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, again, we agreed that, at least for that month, you're spending non travel related. Your portion is about 2,000 bucks. Now, without your side hustles, you're probably bringing in, in after taxes, and this is um, me being a little more ignorant on the Oregon one, so there was also some guessing, but probably like 2800 bucks a month take home. Well, actually, no, we have a uh, pay stub, so let's take a look at that. I feel like that's much better than guess, guessing. Uh, yeah, and I think my I think I get taxed 60, or um, I, my take home's 67%, so whatever, I, whatever you make times 67. Is this... Is this bi-weekly or semi-monthly? Uh, semi-monthly. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see how close to my guess I was. I was... Ooh, I was $100 off. I'm getting good at this. So 2700 is what your net is after everything. So. Yes. Well, uh, for, what's your 401k situation? Um, yeah, so basically my company, I think it's like amazing what my company does. Um, so basically um, they do... Um, they put in a universal 5% no matter what. So I don't have to put in anything and they'll put in 5%, they'll open up an account and it's, they'll just automatically do it. And then they'll match um, They'll match half a percent for every percent you do up to 6%. So basically 3%. And then I do 6% to get the full match. So totals out to like 
14 and a half percent. And uh, that is also a Roth uh, 401k, um, which what's interesting is their universal match. It actually takes off of like my gross income, not my net. So like I'm getting like extra free money. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, cool. Well, you're only 20. So uh, what is the value? 21. Sorry. What is the value of this uh, 401k? Uh, right now it's at 2,700 and I've been, so I've been at my current job for a year and three months. Well, I've been there a year and a half, but they had me as temp to hire cause that's what everyone is. And then after three months, they'll hire you on full time. Um, so I've, that's about, about, about like a year of just them putting it in or investing into it. So, okay. So we have your financial picture. Uh, let's talk about the main issue. The combined everything. So you have no debts, correct? Nope, no debts except for like the 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 big balance on the Costco car, which should be paid off by the end of this month. Okay, tell me about your wife's debts. Yes, so she is in. So she has school debt right now. Um, they are federal. The ones where you don't have to pay, right? You know, the later date. Um, she's trying to be a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Um, so like a doctor, but a nurse, um, for psychiatric patients. Um, and so currently she has about $7,000 in debt, but luckily with the whole forgiveness thing that should be forgiven. Um, so none of it's new debt then? Yeah, no, no new debt. Uh, she does have two credit cards, but I've been on top of her making sure she pays it off, uh, keeping track of her budget um still letting her have fun i don't control her life but um wait she has two credit cards or there is there a balance on those credit cards no um she's about the same with me where like there might be like 150 or 200 for like the statement balance but it's paid off yeah. no interest no for sure uh no vehicle debt for her uh nope we bought both of her uh our cars in cash she had a bmw 3 series that her mom bought her whenever she was 17 and it was a uh total like crap box like <laughs> they bought it for like 5k and after the first year and a half they put like 3k into it in repairs so whenever we got together i was like you're getting a honda crv and <laughs> she wanted a suv type deal so she has a 2005 honda crv that's paid off cool so you guys are uh, pretty debt free then um now she can still spend money on stuff that she wants you're not necessarily controlling when you have a combined account you will budget as a family essentially as a couple what are we allowed to spend on fun and then of course whatever she spends on fun that's you know where she does it but um that's what it is it's not you, combining income wouldn't have you nickel and diamond every purchase she does you would just agree on a budget as a household yeah and i've we as like a couple have it's not terrible but like so my budget for like this is where combining finances get where i've realized that it's kind of stupid the way i've we've been doing it it's like so my grocery budget is like 350 dollars a month hers is like 150 and because that's what her finances are how much she makes per month and then like our restaurant budget is totally different and it's all right all right all right uh, 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 uh. no more no more you have a combined budget now. It doesn't matter who's... You have a combined pile of money that comes in each month and then decide where that money goes as a couple. It doesn't matter who's bringing in more, who's bringing in less at this point. That, that, that's the way we're going to do this going forward. Now, your emergency fund, especially with your car situation, this is actually quite alarming to me. Um, it's not as bad as like a really bad debt or anything, but this is still like, all right, it's go time. Uh, for the that very soon <laughs> for the two thousand seven hundred six dollars you bring in a month ish, um, I don't think you should spend on anything. Well, what's your what's your rent? Uh, my rent is. Let me pull it up so I can tell you the exact number. Um, so this month, just in rent, I'll be paying. Where's it at? Or last month was about uh, seven ninety. Uh, this month will be around the same. That's with utilities and everything included in parking spots and a garage. Does she have any savings? Um. Yes. I don't. Well, uh, I 
can pull that up real quick. I believe she has, I think she has 700 in her Wealthfront account, but she just got um, some Pell Grants back that she didn't have to use for last semester, and that was $1,600. Um, so, and that was, that's, majority of that's going to go into her emergency funds, or I guess into our emergency funds now. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, so, what's that? So take your 1000 just put it in hers, and combine this emergency fund. Try to get to $15,000. I would, um, if we're looking at the collective pile, you know, what is her income that comes in on a monthly basis? So she makes 15 an hour, and she works about 18 hours a week. Um, so... If I can, I have the exact number. I just need to get to it. So you guys have about $3,000 in your emergency fund because you all are going to combine. We want to have another $12,000. I, until you're like a homeowner and the rent goes up and stuff like that. But I think 15000 is good for y'all right now. Mm, let's see. I think for the next eight months from the collective pile, you allocate money in a way that puts $1,500 a month into this emergency fund so you can get to that quickly. Now, what this emergency fund is likely going to cover the at, in um, the relatively near term, it's probably going to cover you getting a new car when yours does inevitably break. And that's fine, and then we do what it takes to replenish that. Having an emergency fund is an emergency if you don't have one. So you need to replenish, You need to get this up as quick as possible. And I was actually pretty light and delicate with $1,500 a month with you know, your, your current expenses and uh, as a couple. So that's what I would do. That would take about eight months to get there, and we're all crossing fingers that your car will get there. I'd do it in six months if I could, but... The good thing is with my current situation, I live about, so my roommate um, is, uh, we work at the same place um, and we we usually carpool together. I've been going in an hour early, so he's been driving his own car. Um, so even if my car does break down, I can still get there. And also I only work like two miles away. So like if worst case scenarios, I can just walk. I do live in Oregon, so it does rain, but. Um, Umbrellas exist, yeah. Do you and your wife live together? Yeah, we live together. Oh, okay, okay, cool. And then you just uh, you have a roommate as well. Yeah, so we live in a two bedroom, two bath apartment with my best friend and my coworker. Um, our living situation is super cool. I know most people like they most couples they don't like to have like an extra person in the, the housing situation, but uh, rent's expensive, and uh, I have a really good friend, <laughs> and so we all get along. Um, yeah, man. I mean, if every if if everyone's enjoying it, then why not? Uh, so. Yeah, I would just get to that fifteen thousand uh, dollars as quick as you can. Just allocate your new collective budget according to get hitting that number on a you know monthly basis in order to get there in six to eight months, eight months max, and then use that money to get the car when you have to, and then fully replenish it if necessary. Now, if the car continues to last after your fifteen thousand dollars, then I'd get a car fund on the side as well that you don't have to as aggressively save for because it's less of an emergency. But if you're at that $15,000, your car is still going strong, uh, which, you know, hopefully it is. I know they definitely last, like, forever. Uh, I'm not a car person, but according to the comment section, they last forever. So um, then you can just have a car fund on the side, and then hopefully that can cover getting uh, a nice used car. You can't get anything fancy uh, with where retirement looks today, with where... Uh, income, household income looks today, but you guys will be able to pretty soon in 21. So freaking young. Um, like, I mean, I don't know. I think you guys are going to do really well. Let's get that emergency fund. Make sure you're able to get a car comfortably and then start kicking butt on this retirement. And I think everything will start to kick up really fast. One, um, the couch flipping I'm doing is actually pretty well in the last two months. I've been able to, I've had 2,400 in revenue and I've made 600 just in sales. Um, very like minimal work. What are the profits though? Profit? I profited a six hundred dollars so far. Um, and the ratio. Well, the reason why the profit's so low is um, my I had like I had to buy like five to six hundred dollars worth of uh just stuff to like do it, cleaning supplies and whatnot. Um. Uh, yeah, and then hopefully, well, 
I mean, she's going to become a nurse in the next two or three years. So she'll actually be working full time. And I think whenever we start making close to the amount of money, because I know I can save um, for the last six months, I've been able to save and invest a thousand dollars a month, like with ease. Um, so I'm hoping whenever she starts making close to my income, um, we'll be able to just really knock it out of the park. And her job is the median income is like 90,000, but we're in Oregon and we care about health and everything. It's like more like 110. So, but that's going to be like seven or eight years down the road, but trying to set like a good base for us <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. And I, I was tempted along with the couch thing to encourage more side hustles to get this quicker. I just, since the side hustles you mentioned besides the couch thing were demanding on your car, I was a little hesitant to with the age of it, but um, whatever you can do to bring in more money, and if that's the couch thing, yeah, kick some butt. Well, the reason why I'm doing the couch thing is because it's actually less wear and tear on my car. Because what I do is I just find a couch online. I just go to U-Haul. I am renting from U-Haul, um, which is actually not too bad on the profit margins. It's like $350 of my expenses, um, which is pretty good, um, in my opinion. Um, so that's also like I kind of I stopped doing food delivery because like I was driving like 100 miles a day. And it was just getting too much like it has 200,000 miles on it. And there's like a whole, there is a nail in the tire now and it's getting poor gas miles. I need to fix something. And I bought it for like $1,800 three years ago. And so it's like, it's like a thousand dollars of repairs. And I'm like, I don't want to do, um, but yeah. So. All right. Any final thoughts? Um, no, thanks for having me on the show. I really enjoy watching it. Let Dakota know what you think about his financial situation in the comments below. And if you have a financial struggle that you're dealing with and you want my take on it, feel free to email me at castingcalephammer at gmail.com, which is also found in the description below. Shout out to my four cups of coffee supporters of Deal Martinez, Mark Josh Bennett, Clayton 006, Tyler Chong, Drew Smith, Timothy Williams, Sam I am, Jason Spriggs, Nicholas Daly, Tom L, Jay Freedom, and Hans. Eight cups of coffee supporters making the dream come true. Joseph Strickland, Anthony, anonymous supporter, and Sam V03. Subscribe and stick around for more. Thanks.